So it's been a minute since I've made a video. Life gets in the way of our fun sometimes. But I got an email the other day from Tom Hogue of Buster's Corners about some updates he's made to IRFFB, and it looks like some pretty good stuff. So come on, let's go. All right, to get started, we need to find this thing. Uh, I'll post a link down below. You can also search for IRFFB. I suggest using Tom Hogue as an identifier in there as well. Otherwise, you'll pull up one of the older versions, possibly. You want to make sure you get this version. Uh, that'll bring you to the GitHub site for Tom here. Go to executables. Click on the file. Download. Save it. I'm saving it into my downloads, iRacing. I have a folder, IRFFB. That's where the old one, old one lives. The new one is IRFFB 2022. Go ahead and save that. And you can see as it's saving down here, it's got a new icon. Look at it again here. See the different icon so you can identify that it's a different file. To run it, just like the other one, all you have to do is click on it. Get your little pop-up run anyway. And boom, there we go. The other thing I would suggest you get is this full guide. This is a write-up that Tom has done, telling you exactly how to use it, what all the changes have done. The big thing is he's added these new sliders over here, renamed some sliders. car and track combinations are saved together and here he goes through the uh, each slider what it does I won't bother you with reading it you can download it and read it yourself so you understand it and it gives you suggestions for car and track tuning how to, how to start start from zero Adjust to max force, understeer, wheel force, effect intensity, and all that is described up here. And most important thing is everything is interrelated. If you have one thing too strong, you won't be able to feel other effects or vice versa. This is what it looks like now with your new new sliders I would suggest using car specific settings just so you can make changes for each car individually the thing to remember here is max force is reversed so all the way to the right where it says 65 is actually minimum force and 5 is maximum for whatever your wheel provides I typically run it somewhere in the middle here, 35 to 40. Just depending on the car and track. So this understeer wheel force, that allows you to adjust how soft the wheel is actually becomes when you're in an understeer condition, like pushing through a corner towards the wall. It, it would get light on you. You, you lose, lose any feeling. Wheels are sliding sideways. You don't have any feeling. So getting that optimum setting allows us to uh, feel exactly when we start pushing or understeering. All right, before we get started, let's see what I have here in the IndyCar. I've been messing around with it a little bit today. Bump intensity, I want to keep that kind of low. I like feeling the bumps, but I don't want it to rip the steering wheel out of my hand. And Auto Club Speedway track is pretty rough. I want the oversteer to be a little more aggressive. The understeer, uh, just because it, when it gets loose on you, it's gone. But understeer, it'll push up into the wall. You can, you can catch that. Uh, also, the understeer wheel force. 
I want it to let go just a little bit. It'll lighten up. Let's see. I guess you'll see in game. I'll try to explain what's going on. Anyway, just jump in here and see what we got. Okay, the nice thing about the Indy car is you can make adjustments on the fly and in the fixed series. We have the rear ARB here. Front ARB. On this particular and then up and down for the weight jagger. Positive weight jagger will help loosen it up in a tight condition or right when you get that arrow push going on. Right now all we're worried about is how IRFFB functions here and you can see I got a real loose grip on the wheel and it's jumping around a little bit but it's not trying to snatch it out of my hand or anything. And because I'm running up in behind this guy, I'm getting some arrow push. I'll try to hit it right there. It's, you can hear it, and the wheel starts getting loose. And I over, I overdid it. I kept the gas on just to show you the effect. Oop, and tuck in behind him here and get some more arrow push. Yeah, you can see that it gets loose. And then as it catches, it pulls back again. It's hard to explain. Uh, hopefully you can see it in the webcam. Stick good time. Just crank it up a bunch here. You can see how it affects how IRFFB affects getting loose. Definitely be loose going into this next corner. Yep, I can feel it, and it's helping me pull the counter steer back. Work at the bottom, 32. Because I can feel it in the wheel. Still there. The main thing is that each person's settings are going to be individual to their gear, to what they're looking for out of IRFFB. Best thing you can do is to read through the guide that Tom has written, tell you how to set it up. Pretty easy to do. Keep in mind that it's for each car on each diff different track. Uh, in this case, I'm on Auto Club Speedway in California for a very particular reason. Automobilista 2 has recently released an oval update. This is one of the tracks that they've added. So I want to do a comparison with the Indy cars in there to the Indy car we have here in iRacing. If you want to see that, be sure to subscribe. Give this a thumbs up to help spread the word. Leave some comments down below. Let me know what you think, what you want to see. And as always, Thanks for watching.